The previous video discussed the demand for inputs, like the demand for water. The demand by, let's say, a farmer for water. Now let's talk a bit about the supply curve for inputs. So here we got the supply of water, have water on the horizontal axis, the price of water on the vertical axis. And I want to get an interpretation of this supply curve or an implication of it. So let's take a particular price, say uh, $3 a gallon. And suppose that when the price is $3 a gallon, the farmer demands five gallons of water. The total expense for water in this case would be fifteen dollars. You don't want to call it total cost because the term total cost we were using before to mean the cost of both water and fertilizer. So let's just leave total cost to mean what it always meant. We'll refer to this as total expense. We could also talk about the total expense of fertilizer or total expense for fertilizer. So the total expense for water here is $15. How about the average expense for water? Well, the average expense for water is the total expense for water divided by the amount of water that you buy. So this isn't divided by the amount of corn you produce. The definition of average expense is uh, it's the expense per gallon of water that you buy, not per bushel of corn that you produce. So the total expense for water is $15. And the total amount of water purchased is five gallons. So the average expense for water is three dollars per gallon. You will notice something. That's the same as the price, three dollars a gallon. In other words, if we're buying five gallons of water and we're asked at the five gallon of water point, What's our average expense? The answer is $3. In other words, the answer is given by the supply curve. Therefore, we can interpret the supply curve for water as being the average expense curve for water. Which we'll abbreviate AE with a W subscript. Okay, the average expense is rising because it's the supply curve and the supply curve is upward sloping. I know we didn't approve that. We haven't gone really into uh, proving input supply curves are upward sloping. Uh, that's beyond the scope of, of, uh, of what we're going to do. So the average supply curve here is upward sloping. What can we say about marginal expense? Well, you know that if the average of something is rising, marginal has to be above it. So the marginal expense for water needs to be above the average expense for water. We, we could draw it in an arbitrary way, because we don't know if it's going up or going down. So the marginal expense for water could have a really weird shape. It just has to be above the average expense. But usually, just for simplicity, we'll draw the marginal expense for water in a fairly simple way, like that. So that's the interpretation of the supply curve as being the average expense of the supply curve of an input as being the average expense of that input, and the location of the corresponding marginal expense of that input curve.